Hey guys, it's San, and welcome back to the Moth Squad. Yeah, that did it. We are going to be covering MetaZoo today. Please, please, before you click off and thumbs down the video, just hear me out. We're not going to be shilling for it, and we're not going to be shitting on it. We're going to actually talk about this properly. So, here we go. I want to break it down into the pros and cons of this game. We're going to really just try to evaluate it as fairly as possible without shilling for it, which keep in mind, I have no form of affiliation. I got no product. I have no skin in that game. And we're going to give it a fair chance because I think this is a game that need, deserves more of an in-depth look. So here we go. First, we're going to start off with the pros. The pros, because these are so hard to see. I kid you not, I watched this tutorial, I learned how to play this game, I started looking at these cards, it is really hard to find the pros first. Immediately, you look at the cons. So, the red border is a pro. Oh, don't, I forgot to mention, some of these are going to double over, okay? I'm going to double up on them, because they, some of their actions are a double-edged sword. The red border, it really makes them stand out from other TCGs. It's just like, it draws your eyes no matter what. And I think that's a good idea. Get the people talking about it. Next, the fourth wall effect. The fourth wall effect, for those of you that do not know, in MetaZoo, depending on your surroundings, like your environment, it gives your, it gives your, what were they, cryptids, a special ability or an upgrade. For example, the fire lizard, if you're near, if you are near forest, then it does triple damage on its attack which is ridiculous. This is a really interesting concept, and honestly, I don't care who you are, this at least got, has got to make you raise an eyebrow and kind of go, all right, what, what's this about? Even if you hate it. Next, the cryptids. Cryptids are a very popular thing that have existed on their own. There's entire channels built around purely the cryptids, with just all these little monsters, mythical monsters. And a lot of people know. Now, the the they this is a rough estimate, okay? Keep in mind the MetaZoo creator said this by mistake. They weren't supposed to say it. They have roughly 250 stores on the books right now. And they have a couple big backers and some deals on the works that they haven't been able to talk about yet. This is a big pro. The big ones we know of right now are Channel Fireball and Rudy from Alpha Investments. These are massive pros, because it means this product is gonna get distributed heavily, and with big name backers, more people are gonna be willing to mess around with this stuff. People aren't gonna be as scared of it as they will be of force of will. Something else supporting it right now is the FOMO, fear of missing out. What that means is that people saw flesh and blood. No one had faith in flesh and blood, the Welcome to Wraith Alpha Edition booster boxes, those were sitting at like 80, 90 bucks for a really long time until they finally started spiking up above a thousand. People kept saying, it's gonna crash, it's gonna be terrible, and it just kept going up, and now they're like 10, 12k? I'm not sure how much they are. So don't quote me on that. Now, now that we've given a nice, uh, we've embellished it, we've made it pretty, we've covered that bronze and gold spray, we gilded it. Now it's time to shit on it. Here we go, the cons. Pokemon. Enough said, I guess. <laughs> okay, let's expand. People are associating this with Pokemon. They're like, this is here to take on Pokemon, Fab is here to take on magic. But here's the difference. Fab has now developed its own identity, not, prop not completely correlated or connected to magic. MetaZoo, on the other hand, is 100% Pokemon. I kid you not. I was asking people I know, showing them the MetaZoo cards and going, what do you think of this? I'm like, oh, it's Pokemon experimenting? I, I'm, I shit you not, okay? <sighs> the red border again. This red border, because they're trying to be bold and they're trying to change stuff up, they're going to be alienating some people and disgusting them from those from that color right out the gate. 
with that boldness and getting more eyes, you're going to also lose some people automatically just for that border. There's people who genuinely get headaches looking at that because it's just, it contrasts. <sighs> elitist. What I mean by elitist, this is not a product. I can just walk up to my store, be like, I got 80 bucks, I got 100 bucks, I'll buy a box, I'll buy a couple packs. The Kickstarter box is $2,500 and the set has, the game hasn't even officially launched. That's what people are seeing before anything else. Flesh and Blood has that pretty bad already, you know? Everyone looks at first edition, they're like, that's terrible, the prices are high, Monarch, $400 a box. But then they have the Unlimited on the side, which are, I believe all the Unlimited sets right now are below $100. $100 tops, depending on where you are. And MetaZoo is that multiplied by cancer. Like, it's awful. It's so bad over there. And that's really just like Tanya Harding. Like, they're just kneecapping that game with that. They need to get that under control when it comes out. The tutorial video. I gotta say this. And Yarkin goes hand in hand with it. The tutorial video for the game wasn't all that great. I watched it. And I had to watch it with Sarah because it took two of us to figure out that tutorial video. They kept using Yargon, which is just specific words to their game. That felt completely unnecessary and just made the game a little harder to understand and almost a little frustrating. So their graveyard, which to keep in mind, Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, and Flesh and Blood all use the word graveyard for where your cards go. MetaZoo, being the special snowflake it is, calls it the cemetery. MetaZoo, every game calls their stuff the deck. MetaZoo likes to call it their spell book. And their cards are not cards, they're pages. Then, whenever you uh, pull a, draw a card, it's called bookmarking. These little things that they're trying to make it really stand out actually, in my opinion, hurt it overall because you're you're trying so hard to stand out, you're overcomplicating the Yargon and making that barrier to entry just a little bit higher. Yeah, sure, you can learn the words, but if I were to go, all right, all right, I got to draw. All right, so I'm going to bookmark one of, one of my spellbook pages for my spellbook. And I'm going to play it, so now it's going to go to my cemetery. What? What did you just say? Use English. Oh, I, draw, I drew a card, and then I, and then I uh, played it, and it went to my graveyard. Was that so difficult? No, I don't think it was. Okay. The cryptids. The cryptids are also a big negative. MetaZoo is not effectively marketing the cryptids as they should be. In Pokemon, you know what they are. You know what Charizard is. You know what Pikachu is. They had an anime. You got to know the story. Kids loved it. And as it grew up, everyone happens to know who those are. With Magic the Gathering, that's, that's just really old school. And it managed to develop its own style. Like Magic the Gathering, that's a very unique case. Flesh and Blood. That one is a little harder to explain. Basically, reading the flavor text of the cards and reading their book that they release with it, because there's a really expensive book out there for Flesh and Blood, that tells you the story of it. For these cryptids, they haven't actually done anything to tell you about the cryptids. Mothman, the big Charizard of the set, I don't even know what Mothman is. I didn't know what Mothman was until I started researching this video. That is not good. Not good at all. And the last one, the biggest issue right now that MetaZoo has, it's being shilled. It's being shilled out the ass. MetaZoo right now, there are so many people specced in it, so many people with money tied up in it, who want this game to just go to the moon because they want to line their own pockets. That it's causing not only those prices to inflate, but people to be skeptical of the game. This game has an... I'll, I'll continue with my overview in a minute. 
it's really creating a situation where people are very uneasy about the game. Just because you shill for it doesn't mean I'm going to get confidence. If anything, I'm going to go, wait a minute. Why do? Why does this game need you to vouch for it and shill for it instead of the game itself giving me advertisement and pushing itself to get the game? For me to get the game. Does it not have enough backing for itself to do it and it needs to borrow off of your name? You see what I mean? All right. So, in summation, here we go. MetaZoo, I keep wanting to say flesh and blood. MetaZoo has the potential to be an interesting card game. The fourth wall effect, the... Oh yeah, I forgot to mention how complicated the cards are. Like, go look at that tutorial video. Those cards are complicated. As it stands, it's a very interesting card game concept. It's a very interesting game overall. But there's so much negativity surrounding it, and I think the execution of various parts of this are really hurting it. If they can make a better tutorial video, make it more professional, okay? What Their tutorial video does not look that different from my card opening videos. Do you realize that? Do you realize how bad that is? Go take some pointers from Flesh and Blood. Do it like that, automatically we fix that issue. Yargon. Yargon is holding it back. Get rid of the Yargon. Yeah, you're going to feel like a special snowflake, but, but no, no, you've got to be realistic. Get rid of that Yargon, and you can start pulling it off better. The cryptids, you got to market them. You got to market them. Let them know what's going on with these guys. And it's that release has got to get those prices under control. These are a lot of things I just listed out that MetaZoo needs to do for me to really start believing it. Yeah, full disclosure, I'm going to buy a first edition booster box when it releases in, uh, what was it, June or July? I don't even know. They didn't set a... They haven't even set a proper date. I'm going to buy one. And that's why I decided to do this proper overview. MetaZoo has potential, but there's a lot of hurdles, a lot of walls in between itself and success. And some of those are being put in place by the creator. Like, that, that's a major issue. And those need to be fixed. So, tell me, what do you think of MetaZoo? Do you think it is an absolute garbage, garbage, file, garbage fire waiting to happen? Or do you think this could potentially follow in footsteps similar, not, not identical, similar to flesh and blood and grow into its own little niche or group or maybe even grow into a titan? What do you think? Like, actually tell me. I know I slant on MetaZoo, but I made sure to let its quality shine out well. So... Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.